What's up, Jensen? How you doing, man? All right. We are here with the uh, Character Strong Tech Tips webinar. Um, let's see. Brian Slater here, my co-host. Can you see me? Is showing up. Um, I just want to, first of all, appreciate uh, all of you guys signing up and joining into the room. Um, we are going to talk uh, for maybe the next hour um, about random tech stuff. Um, mostly about Zoom um, with the idea of trying to get you guys going. Um, let's see. Why is Brian not in here? Oh, I'm right. Can you see me all right? Can you hear me? Hmm. Bear with me here in just a second. I love technology. Are you not able to see me? No. Oh, apparently you can hear both of them. Oh, can I you, just can you hear me you. all right? Okay. That's rather odd. Well, I see you. I wonder if this is uh, um, uh here, let me Huh. Uh Well, appreciate all the uh the messages here. Um apparently we can see each other. Maybe I just yeah. in from another I think they got us both, man. Uh, they can. They we got Kyle Olson out there. He uh, he just rang in, says he can see I both of we us. Did our so homework. They can hear you. I don't know if you can't hear me. Can you hear me all right, Jensen? <laughs> I don't think Jensen can hear me. So uh, I'll go ahead and get rolling. Um, uh, I don't know if we can let him know uh, that that I that they can hear both of us, but we'll get going oh, here. This um, is odd. <laughs> oh, here we go. COVID nineteen, man. We can hear you. Oh, oh, that's his screen. Okay. All right. Well, um, if Slater can see me and I, can, I can't. can't seem to see him, maybe I will join back in. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, while we're waiting for Jensen here, um, my name is Brian Slater. I'm a high school teacher out in Sumner, Washington. Um, and uh, right now in the, in the midst of COVID-19 teaching. Um, I teach primarily social studies, uh, IB history, uh, theory of knowledge. I have a 10th grade uh, civics class I teach as well as advanced leadership. Um, and today our goal is to just help you wrap your mind around some of the, the challenges that we're facing right now in the, in the field of education uh, as it applies to teaching remotely. Um, here's Jensen. Uh -huh. You got us. Hey, we go. welcome, man. No, Good me, to have you back. I was just kind of officer can't seem to figure out technology. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, I was just introducing myself, and uh, I'll, I'll kick it over to you in a second. Just finish, uh, in kind of talking about our introduction here and and what we're all facing. Um, you know, my wife and I. My wife is a chemistry teacher. I'm a history teacher, and right now um, we're very bewildered. I think that's the the best word I would use to describe what we're facing uh, in terms of the challenge, the daunting challenge. Um, we have our own children. I have a six year old and a nine year old, and so juggling their learning needs, their academic needs, with the academic needs of our students has been quite the challenge. And I don't know how we would do it without technology. To be honest with you. Um, I just, it, it, I don't, I can't fathom what, how we would do this. Uh, and so today we're going to talk to you a little bit about Zoom. Uh, we'd love to start with kind of a and a but before we do that, I want to introduce you to, to Mike Jensen. I'll, he, uh, this guy is uh, jack of all trades. Um, I, uh, it, it seems like it doesn't matter what I need. My go-to is Mike Jensen. Uh, the guy is the, I called him yesterday, the king of smarter, not harder. 
he just knows it seems like how to do everything. So uh, it's it's an absolute honor and privilege to have an opportunity to share the screen with a legend in in uh, in my opinion. So with that, there you go, Jensen. There's my introduction <laughs> to you. Tell us a little bit about what you do. That's uh, that's some serious uh, flattery there. Um, so uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Mike Jensen. Uh, my wife, uh, my better half, is actually Alicia Jensen. She's a, a principal. Um, I've been in education uh in the computer science technology department for the better part of like 17 18 years uh, i've worked for the uh the bethel school district uh the sumner school district um, and now i'm here with character strong uh it's a great family to be part of and a, a great mission that we've got uh to just essentially spread kindness uh, as much as humanly possible so um but uh yeah a little bit myself uh mostly just do all things computers uh, i think at some point i was probably just born with a computer um uh, anything everything all things data uh it's definitely my jam uh love to work and uh make any kind of thing possible with data um and here we are now with this idea that we essentially have to have uh everything online um and watch a huge paradigm shift of getting the classroom into a, a virtual space um, so hopefully with uh, our combined knowledge, we can kind of either give some guidance uh, or some tips and tricks. Um, some of you, I'm sure, are probably super proficient in all things uh, Zoom. Um, if not, uh, that's what we're here for. So uh, that pretty much sums it up. Good stuff. Uh, hey, Jensen, you want to load up that, uh, that second presentation there, the, uh, the new one? I don't see it there in the options. And then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and kind of start up with um, we wanted to just start with the basic Q and A um, and make it pretty open um, to, to, to the questions you might have right out of the gates, like uh, things that you're, you're just trying to wrap your mind around. And I can share a little bit about what I'm doing to, to mitigate some of those things, those challenges that you might be facing. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be an expert on remote learning because I'm not, uh, I'm pretty new to this, but uh, in terms of educational technology, using technology to facilitate instruction, that's something that's right down my wheelhouse. And so, um, you know, uh, we can kind of start with some of those questions that you might have uh, and then go from there. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them into the uh, into this chat bar over here on the right. Um, and we'll load up the, the slides here. Uh, so, Jensen, you want to get that going there? The, yeah, uh, um, one. taking a little bit here. Okay. There's actually not too much to the slides, but. Yeah. I'll just get the, the, the current one going and then we can, we can uh, exit it out there. So here we go. Um, okay. Uh, so again, your current needs, um, you know, one thing that, my wife and I right now are, are trying to wrap our minds around just to, to start in general terms is balancing the, the load, uh, the workload when it comes to, um, you know, I teach five subjects. And so trying to make videos, I've been making videos for my students and I'm, I'm trying to, to spread that out. You know, Monday, I'll film a video for my theory knowledge, 11th graders, um, and then I'll share some content with my 10th grade civics kids. And then Tuesdays, I'm working with my theory of knowledge 12th graders and my core leadership students. And then Wednesdays, um, I, I work with my IB history kids. And so, uh, uh, you know, spreading that workout is something that is, uh, that's been a challenge. And today, hopefully, as we teach you how to use Zoom, uh, Zoom conferencing, I can walk you through what I do uh, with my Zoom calls with my colleagues, and then how I upload those to YouTube and all that. So, um, so putting information online. I see a question here. Um, individual out there struggling with teachers who do not have any experience with putting information online. Uh, not even a single lesson, just a way to connect with their students. Um, and for those teachers, I would encourage to start small. Um, utilize the resources that you may already have. Uh, if your district is a one-to-one -one district or even just has a Google account, if you have a Google district or a Microsoft district, something as simple as making a Microsoft form or a Google form, uh, we we have, you'll see tomorrow in, in a blog that's going to come out on Character Strong's blog. Um, I, I kind of wrote through some of the tools that I'm using right now. So today, uh, if you hear some of these ideas, you want links, that'll show up tomorrow in the blog. Um, but uh, a simple temperature check, 
you know, the strong temperature check is a real basic way to start. I sent one out last week and the engagement was, um, it was decent. I had about 60 students respond out of 150 that I sent it to. So a little lower than I would have hoped, but again, the students are trying to figure this out as well. Um, and so that engagement piece is I see a, Another question out there, I teach an alternative education is challenging enough to get my students to school. How do I get them online for class now? And that is, that's right now the question all of us have. Uh, our district, and I think the whole state of Washington right now is really trying to be mindful of equity. And if we make something mandatory for uh, teachers to maybe, or students to be learning new content, well, we have to guarantee that that instruction meets all the needs of every single student and we can't really even guarantee that every student has access to internet at their house. And, and so we provide hotspots in our district, but even then they have to have access to cell service for that to work. So um, there's all sorts of challenges that right now we're trying to mitigate. Um, and I think, you know, when it comes to encouraging kids to get online uh, and, and follow the lessons that you build, if you're gonna use Zoom conferencing, I would encourage you to do um, some things to make it uh, personal and, and some, you know, kind of show a little bit of who you are as a person to the kids. And I'll tell you about that a little bit later uh, at toward the end here. But um, um, yeah, so other questions out there. Um, well, and, uh, to kind of yeah. add on to what uh, Brian was saying, um, for those that are not a Google district um, or Microsoft district, um, feel free to email me directly, uh, Mike at characterstrong.com. Um, I can definitely help either uh, give you the verbiage uh, to your technology departments at your school districts to kind of champion um, to get that stuff going. Um, I'm sure they're probably inundated currently with uh, just trying to do the distance learning aspect um, and getting Chromebooks out or laptops or uh, whatever the, the equipment is. Um, so there are hotspots, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, getting Google accounts um, for an education is completely free. Uh, you can get thousands of accounts. Uh, I don't know how, how large your district is, um, but it's pretty easy to spool up um, having done it multi or for a couple districts now. So uh, yeah, feel free to shoot me afterwards. Yeah, and we'll, we'll come back to these questions here toward the end uh, or maybe as we move through. A um, couple caveats to keep in mind. Uh, we, we are certainly not the authority in terms of what technology use what should look like in every single district. So it's gonna be important that you always lean on your district guidelines uh, when it comes to technology use and limitations and the things that they are comfortable with you doing and the things they're not comfortable with. Just make sure you're abiding by uh, your district um, when it comes to doing the things with technology. Uh, and that's just a, a quick little caveat to keep in mind. All right, so let's get down to, to Zoom conferences. Uh, this is something that I've been using for the last week. Uh, I've obviously done, I've done a couple Zoom conferences before. It was a necessity in the field of education. So I had a little bit of background. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on my screen share and give you an idea of what uh, a Zoom conference looks like when you start it up, when you load it up. Um, when I turn on my screen share, it's gonna do this pretty cool mirror thing. Um, just bear with me there while I switch screens. Boom, there it is. Uh, all right, so this is what a Zoom conference looks like right here. Uh, it always starts with your camera pointing at you. You're gonna go through a couple sound checks, a, a, a microphone check and a video check, and then uh, you're in your room. And you can see here up at the top, it has a Zoom meeting ID number for you. Um, and, uh, and from there, and if, if you can't see that meeting ID number, you just, uh, you can exit full screen. That might be what's going on there. Uh, and then toward the bottom, you'll see several different um, options down here, tools and such. Uh, the first question that I think many of you were wondering, like, how do I get people to my Zoom conference? Uh, how do I give them the details? And that's pretty simple. Go to the invite button here. And when you go to invite, uh, all I do is I just click copy invitation and I'll close it down. And then I open up an email from my email account and I just paste, click paste, and it'll paste all the information that you need into that email. And then you can email it to the various people. I have found issues when I click invite and type in the names of people from my organization in here. 
um, it, it doesn't notify them. Um, that's something that is that poses a problem. I, I don't know why, but anyways, um, I always just click invite, open, uh, click copy invitation. One thing that's really important, um, if you're gonna give this number out manually to people, um, they do not have to have a Zoom account to log in to see your, your Zoom meeting. So you might just have them go to the zoom.us URL and they type in this number here and then don't forget the password. This right here is down at the bottom right corner. That is something that's get over that gets overseen pretty easily. Um, and so that password is is can be hard to find. Uh, and you just find that under invite. Oops, my turn screen share off, back on. My apologies there. I accidentally turned off the <laughs> screen share. Um, so there you go. Uh, Zoom right now for education has opened up a, a free. Uh, free access, free licensing for, I think for, for districts, districts that choose it. Um, there'll be a link to that in the blog tomorrow, uh, to the article of the CEO who, who announced that. So, um, anyways, let's continue on here. Uh, manage participants. This is where you can see who's all here. Uh, you can mute them if you need to, uh, you can, um, turn off their video if necessary. Uh, this is where they can also give you feedback. You'll see down here on the right, they can ask you to go slower, speed up. Uh, they can give you all sorts of feedback. And uh, I know that some districts are allowing teachers to work with their kids on Zoom and others are not. So this would, if you're, if you are one of those districts um, that is allowed to, um, it keeps doing this, is allowed to uh, um, you zoom with with students then you're going to want to keep an eye on this uh manage participant screen that's where they're going to be able to give you feedback on how you're doing teaching wise um now for the the important part the share screen this is where uh, I, in my opinion when i'm doing my own videos uh, this is a really important button here um, this is where you get to select what you want people to be able to see um, and so, uh, hold up. Oh, they're not able to see my screen. Thanks for the heads up on that. Uh, go back here. My apologies. Um, as Brian sent that screen share up, there's a couple Zoom related questions. Uh, is there a pro for using Zoom over Google Chat? Um, I've well, obviously, if your district is a Google district um, and uh, your district allows for your staff and students to use uh, Google Hangouts or Google Chat, um, uh, obviously, it's a uh, equity sort of issue, I suppose, at this point. Um, I don't think there's any necessarily pros or cons. I mean, some have limitations. Um, uh, I haven't used Zoomed all that much, um, however, I, from my personal uh, use of Zoom, I think it probably requires a bit more bandwidth. Um, Google Chats is is always nice because it's uh, tied to your Google account, and for those that use Google, um, you know, it's all archived, it's all there. Um, it's a kind of another, or it spurs into another kind of category um, that Brian and I were just kind of discussing earlier about. Uh, once you're in Zoom and you start pushing that stuff out. Um, it's not really editable at that point because you're sending it off into a digital cloud. Um, so then you've got uh, all of the, uh, the federal laws in terms of uh, archiving data and, and all of that uh, HIPAA, FERPA, uh, all those connotations. Um, it, obviously, we're going into a very odd period of time where uh, we're having to be really responsive to the needs. Um, of our students and our staff. Um, and so I'm sure some of these things will probably work itself out over the next couple months. Um, but I, I do know just being from our working at the district capacity uh, that Google Hangouts is archivable, um, is uh, has retention period. Um, and of course, uh, for those uh, that use Google Hangouts um, or it, it can be used on student accounts um, in the, the services that we always saw it was under the age of 13 that we disabled them. So you'll probably have to work with your technology department on that. Good stuff. I think we're we're back in business when it comes to the screen share, Jensen. So let me know if it for some reason it closes off, closes down again. 
Um, all right, so you'll see here, uh, I think we left off on share screen. That is um, gonna be where you're gonna find a lot of the, um, the, the kind of the cool features of Zoom. Are you able to see this, Jensen? Yep. Okay, um, so you'll see this little button right here where it says share computer sound. Uh oh, uh, it sounds like your audio just cut out. Okay. Okay. Can you hear uh, me? Look. Oh, we're getting there. All right. Can you? You got me. All right. Yep. Oh, we're good. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So you'll see uh, down here where it says share computer sound. That button right there. You got to make sure you press that button if you are going to want your participants in the Zoom call to hear audio from things like videos that you're playing in your actual presentations. So make sure that that little share computer sound is pressed there. Um, that way they can hear everything that you um, that, that you might have on your Google Slides, for example. If you have a YouTube video that you wanna play for your students while you're teaching, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that share computer sound is there. Um, so uh, once you click that, once you click that share, um, then you're live and you're in your uh, Zoom call. And uh, right now I got way too many, I got my Zoom going, I got uh, this webinar thing going. So, um, but basically all you need to know is up here while you're doing your Zoom call, um, you can do all sorts of things. You can stop your video, uh, you can draw on your slides. So my wife, when she does these Zoom calls and her using Google Slides, she always puts a blank slide up and then we'll annotate uh, we have a little, uh, you can do a touch screen on your Chromebook or we use, we have a little um, Intuos tablet that we can write with uh, that we use uh, to annotate. Um, so that's how you would annotate. When you click it, you'll see it comes up with all sorts of different things you can do. You can spotlight, uh, you can draw, erase, et cetera, all sorts of cool things there. Um, so there you go for uh, the annotation. Um, and then anytime you need to go up to the menu, all you do is you slide up to where that little green ID and stop share is at. And this is where you can control many of the features. Um, uh, under more, this is what's important as well. If you wanna record your video and you've already started sharing your screen, you wanna click on share, or I'm sorry, on more, and that's where you can click record. Uh, I usually record on the computer. If you're using a Chromebook, you might wanna record to the cloud just because storage space might be an issue on your Chromebooks. Um, but there you go. And then when you click stop share, it takes you right back to your video. And from there, you go back to all these same menu options down here on the bottom. Um, you can go to your chat. Uh, this is also where you can begin recording your Zoom conference if you want to. Um, and then here's a pretty cool feature. And I have not, because I've not used this with students where I have students join the Zoom conference yet. Uh, but I'm excited to try this out when we do get students in these Zoom conferences, um, and that's breakout rooms. Um, my understanding is you can manually assign students into breakout rooms or people into breakout rooms. You can divvy up the number of rooms and you can give them a task if you want. I kind of think of it like a, an actual classroom space where you might have you know 20 people in your Zoom call and and you want them in groups of five, so you'd make four rooms and assign them to go into their rooms and then you could drop in as the as the moderator of the zoom call uh, and that's a pretty cool feature that i'm looking forward to trying out uh, hopefully in the near future um, other than that uh, i know that in on the actual uh, participant screen they have options to raise their hand an electronic hand and and it'll show you that over in the chat you know that somebody's waiting for you to call on them you can also set up multiple individuals to host with you. Um, and uh, and that would, you know, that's just gonna be in your Zoom settings. Uh, when you set up your account, it'll it'll give you that opportunity to, to identify multiple hosts if you want to. So um, I know our, our school is doing that right now. We do all our staff meetings using Zoom. And so our uh, assistant principals and our principal will co-present with this and that's, they just, are able to co-host and, and control the screen as they please. So um, I would encourage anyone out there who's in education, who wants to, to begin uh, creating content to send out to their kids, start with Zoom. Um, when you press record on this, it will ask you uh, where you wanna record it. So if I click record on this computer, 
then it's going to start recording my conference. When I'm done, all you do is this record button will change to a stop button. And then when you hit stop uh, and end your meeting, it will then save your meeting to a video file on your computer. And then comes the part where you go to YouTube uh, and you can upload it there to YouTube. So uh, we can talk a little bit more about that toward the end. But there you go. Jensen, uh, you got anything you want to add on? Oh, actually, uh, if you want to head back to that, uh, your Zoom thing. Um, oh, you yeah, yeah. Share your screen. And uh, I think we got a couple of requests just to have you um, go to uh, managing participants. Okay. Yep. Okay. And what do they want to see? Oh, uh, looks like it's your screen's not sharing. Oh. All right, here. Oh, my bad. Here we go. Share. And then uh, once you're back into Zoom, and then if you want to maximize your window there too, maybe try and get more pixels on the screen. Oh, wait. If Did it mess up? Um, well, it's just that we don't get to see the bottom of the, the actual sub menu. So you can't see down here where it says mute, stop video, uh, invite, all that? Well, we can, but not with your screen fully maximized, it looks like. Or maybe it pops up. If oh, you... okay. Here we go. Here we go. How's that? Is that better? Uh, now all I see is just you. Oh, okay. I'll, let's see here. Let me do this then. Maybe I'll just drag it. Here, a how, little bit. How's this? Is that good? Well, actually, probably a little bit the opposite direction. Oh, okay. Large. I got you. Yeah. There like we that? Go. Perfect. And okay. If you want to here we go. Do a little segment on managing particip participants again. There we go. Yeah. All right. So uh, under managing participants, what will happen when you have multiple people join this conference? Um, they will all show up over here, and this is where you can uh, click a little drop down. And what'll what'll happen is um, they will, when you click the drop down next to their name, it will allow you to mute their microphone. It'll allow you to turn off their video. Um, it'll let you kind of control what they're doing. Um, you're going to want to tell everyone that uses this, that you get a log of all the chats as well. So, uh, my, I have not seen this myself yet, but I know that my administrators have talked about this, that, uh, I think it saves your whole chat log, uh, even your private chats with other people into a Google spreadsheet or a spreadsheet, maybe not a Google sheet. Um, and then you can kind of go through and see the different chats, which uh, could be Pandora's box. Uh, Want to make sure that you you let people know pretty early on uh, that nothing is really from the meeting host side of things. You, you don't really have a lot of, of the privacy aspects that people might think they have with this. So were there other questions about the managing piece there that you can see, Jensen? Um, not really. However, uh, let's see a quick question. Can you record in zoom if you have no participants? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I do when I'm making my class videos. I basically am recording by myself, um, the zoom conference. And, uh, and that can be a little weird at first because, you know, people aren't really, you, you know, we're not used to teaching to an empty room, uh, to a, to a screen. And so, for my wife, I know that was kind of challenging for her because it's weird. You're you're pretending to talk to an audience that you can't really see, and so that you know that that's a that's a challenge. But yeah, you'll get comfortable with it pretty quickly once you get into your flow. Uh, and and again, having that uh, having like a couple blank slides here and there to be able to annotate on for her because she's a right she's a whiteboard writer. Um, and so that's where she does that. Uh, she, she just builds little blank slides and then we'll write on it. But yeah, Zoom by yourself um, would encourage everyone to do that. Uh, and then the next question kind of uh, correlates with that, but can you show just a web browser or a slide as opposed to a webcam and also record it? Yep, absolutely. So uh, when you click share screen, it will ask you uh, what you want to record. And It'll show different tabs. It'll have, you know, uh, I'll, I'll usually in my Google Slides, I will, um, I'll just have that open in its own Chrome browser window. And then I'll just go to that and, and get it rolling. And it, it'll put your picture up there in the top right corner so the kids can still see you. And 
Um, I've been co-teaching me and another uh, IB history teacher. We we will just have a nice conversation with each other about the content. Right now, we're teaching on the rise of authoritarians. You'll see links in tomorrow's blog to the videos that I've made. Please, uh, you know, I am kind of an amateur at this, but it's been fun. We've been making the best of, out of it. We've been trying to keep our lessons down to 30 minutes in length. Uh, and that way, you know, the retention piece is, is uh, a little more sustainable for kids. Uh, YouTube has incredible analytics on um, on the, uh, the, the retention rate. You might not want to look at those analytics. You don't want to get your feelings hurt. Uh, I did a 30 minute Zoom call. Uh, my average listen time on one of my history lectures was like 11 minutes. I'm like, oh, wow. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the love there. Um, really good. Really kind of you to to pay attention to my, my lesson, you know, that I thought was so important, but <laughs> it, obviously, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but uh, you get some interesting that, data. Is there a, is the time limit to zoom? Uh, uh, if there is, I haven't hit it yet. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think that for the basic accounts, I believe you get 40 minutes is what the limit would be, um, which is plenty of time, you know, um, so there's a couple other just kind of random questions. Um, some of them are on Zoom, but uh, a lot of them, are, I think, are just uh, really in the field set of um, people never having done this before. Um, and so I, I think just alluding to the fact that that I think all of your students will know that this is kind of a new territory sort of thing. Um, there'll be bumps, there'll be bruises, there'll be some mistakes here and there. Um, but I think just you know, just trying to work through the caveats and work through the, the problems and uh, giving everyone grace uh, is probably the best way to handle that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it depends on obviously the equipment that you have as well and the licensings and the software that you have, but uh, on a Mac uh, for those, well, kind of getting into the, the tips and tricks here, but um, on a Mac, especially with the, the newest operating system, Mojave, um, you press open Apple shift and the number five. Uh, again, that's that little uh, window icon or the little Apple icon uh, shift in five. Um, you can actually choose to uh, record actually a movie of your desktop. Um, so something like Zoom is not something critical. If all you're gonna do is just show uh, movement on your desktop, um, you can just have it saved directly to uh, a movie uh, that'll be saved on your desktop, like you uh, screen share or uh, screen windows. Um, if you open Apple Shift 4, uh, it'll create like a little window icon on your screen. Uh, in fact, let's see if I can do sharing of my desktop. All right, so I, I don't know if you guys can see my desktop at all. Oh, I, I saw part of it. All right, so uh, open Apple Shift 3 uh, creates an entire uh, screen window. Uh, open Apple Shift 4 creates a little mouse cursor that you can take a screenshot of. And then Open Apple Shift 5 uh, creates kind of a shadowy, opaque uh, screen where you can choose the window that you're going to record from. So if I wanted to record something like down here. And then this little menu system pops up down here. Um, so I can capture the entire screen, uh, capture just a window, like a, a web browser, um, or I can just grab a portion, which is obviously what I'm doing. Um, there's the other options here. I obviously just have mine set for the desktop. Uh, I don't really have a timer, um, but then I can hit record. And then if I move my mouse around in here, stop the recording that saves directly to my desktop and here is the recording that i just created and i can drag and drop that into youtube and have it be a file um oh is that my audio your audio can you hear me now? No. no. Can you hear me? Can you? Uh, that's a little odd. Mm. I can hear you, but it's coming in like uh, you're talking through Tron or something. Um, 
Let's see. Work. So, robot. Some other questions here. Uh, Brian, can you talk about equity? Able to hear me. Hear me okay. Can you hear me out? Uh, Hello. My behalf is here. I'm on a my big issue here. This Jensen sound like a roadie. Or is it um, All right, Brian, we're going to have you uh, jump out and jump back in. Yeah. I think people are saying that you still kind of sound like a robot. All right, so uh, equity. Um, again, this is kind of a touchy subject. Uh, some districts have a plethora of money um, that they've advocated for their kids uh, and technology use. Um, I know when I came from Sumner, um, we did a, a really big one-to-one -one initiative. Um, so uh, pretty much every kid got a Chromebook. And if not, um, we definitely had uh, a, a big push for that to happen. Um, however, a lot of our kids still live in a very remote, uh, unincorporated areas of Pierce County um or in the surrounding counties um so they might not necessarily have uh internet connections or if they do it's pretty shady um i know the district offers a lot of hotspots um and the hotspots are free to use for education um i'm not entirely certain how we got in to uh i can't remember what cell phone provider uh gave that to us or what grant um, but i know it didn't necessarily cost the district uh any substantial fee up front. Um, I know there was kind of like a long-term model um, in terms of data consumption and usage that the, the district would pay for. Um, but obviously with this uh, revamping of everything going online, um, I know just like uh, ISPs, they've removed data uh, or data throttling and data caps. Um, so for a lot of people that use Comcast, uh, one terabyte was essentially the monthly limit that you could use uh, before they started charging you like $50 per 20 gig segment or something of the sort, um, which is absurd. Uh, but now they've removed that uh, at least up until April 24th or May, May 17th, something of the sort. Um, Brian, it looks like you're back on. I'm back. Do I still uh, sound like a robot? Nope, you're good. Oh, man, I kind of thought that was kind of cool, but... <laughs> I was thinking about doing a little tea pain, you know. Uh, yeah, auto definitely. Um, let's see. Question wise. Yeah, you had a question about equity. I think before we left. Yeah. Um, this is the million dollar question right now. I think right now the the it's the biggest challenge is um, what do we do for the students whose hotspots are limited uh, or they they just can't access the content that you have in a way that is feasible or reasonable or, or worth their time. And um, I really wish I had a good answer. I think that the, the it's, it's a question of infrastructure right now, not just in education, but in, in our nation. I mean, the big, you're actually going to be hearing about it in the next election is the question of a 5G network. Is that something that the government should be funding or, or private? Should we let the private sector handle that? Um, and uh, it's, it's right now, it's the equity in terms of just access to the content is a challenge. And then that's not even talking 504 plans and IEPs and ways in which teachers are going to be able to meet the needs of every one of their students without violating the student civil rights. Um, and like I said, I, I don't, I wish I had an answer for you speaking from any sort of authority. Um, I, I don't, you know, I'm a classroom teacher, just like most of the individuals in this room listening right now. Um, and I think the, right now, the, the best thing we can do is just try to meet our kids where they're at. Um, and that if we, if we need to, um, be producing, um, 
document, you know, where we're trying to even just transcribe what we're saying. I know Google Docs has a pretty cool feature where you can have your self recorded in the document while you're talking. And that might be something where you just record while you're talking and it will capture the text and you can send that to your kids. Google Slides, by the way, has a pretty cool feature where you can it will tra it will transcribe while you're presenting. Um, and so uh, I, I can maybe demo that too. Um, I'll get that loaded real quick. And uh, Jensen, if you want to uh, pick up um, some of the uh, the other questions that might be out there. Um, yeah, definitely. There's a so, question uh, about disabling students' ability to record you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, in in Zoom, there's the option to uh, like, for example, and even Webinar Jam here. Uh, there's a little icon that shows uh, your camera. Uh, if I click the camera off, uh, obviously it just kind of shows the snapshot that was loaded of me uh, from my profile. If I click it back on, we're good to go. So um, at any point in time within the Zoom interface, you can turn on and off your camera um, and you can turn on and off your audio as well. Yeah, so I'll uh, show them real quick uh, the, the cool feature where it will transcribe for you while you're teaching. Are you able to see my slideshow here? Yep. All right. So in Google Slides, when you click on present up here, um, you'll see down here, right at the bottom, it just says captions. And when you click it, it will load a little bottom area there and will capture the words that you are saying, period. Oh, I didn't know if it would punctuate it for me. Uh, it's not 100% accurate, but it's way better than nothing. So this is another thing you can do at least for the students that can get access to the video, this is one way to accommodate the needs of students who may be deaf or hard of hearing. Um, again, an equity and uh, through looking through that lens of equity again, the way to do that is you just click on the CC captions down there at the bottom of the screen and it will uh, capture the words that you are saying. Uh, so two tips and tricks that kind of come to mind, especially when it comes to Google Slides. Um, because we tend to utilize uh, YouTube videos quite a bit um, and the monetization of YouTube videos. Um, if you actually embed your YouTube video in the Google slide, uh, more often than not, they actually remove the ads from it. Um, so it won't pause uh, the video midway or halfway through uh, to show you an ad. Um, so that's you know a really good utilization way for teachers to avoid um, those, those are YouTube ads. Um, another thing uh, to parlay into that YouTube ad, um, for those, uh, it's kind of a very general 30,000 foot view, but uh, Raspberry Pis, um, they're like 35 bucks. Uh, you can get them all over, um, but there's a, a, an app or an open source module called uh, Raspberry uh, or Pi Hole actually. Um, and so what that does is it takes all of the data that's coming in from the internet, uh, filters out all the bad stuff, filter out, out all the ads, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it saves you on, on bandwidth usage uh, and that sort of thing. But obviously it's something you'd have to personalize uh, for yourself uh, at your own house. It's probably not gonna be going door to door for your students, mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. Uh, there is also uh, another service called PeerView, I believe, .com. Um, which allows you to uh, take a YouTube link. Uh, so you can just copy the YouTube URL, uh, post that in there, and it will essentially do a proxy uh, and try and strip the, the Google ad uh, or the YouTube ad out of it as well. Um, if you're concerned about um, you know, showing YouTube videos to your students. Um, let's see, another good question. Yeah, I see one here. Um... Somebody asked if uh, uh, students have access to Zoom. Have I had any students access Zoom using a game console? Um, I have not actually invited students to take part in my Zoom meetings yet. Um, I'm, I'm not quite there yet, and our district doesn't really want us doing that yet as well. Um, at least, ah, maybe maybe they have, and I've, I've misinterpreted. Um, I, I'm not ready to go there yet. I, I'm just, I don't want to really manage a whole bunch of of teenagers um, trying to get me off my off focus. So what I do is I just record my Zoom and I upload it to YouTube and then I share that YouTube link with my students on their Google Classrooms. And I, I built Google Forms to go with that as well. So I'll build a Google Form and it's just a, uh, I, I usually build the form to uh, address 
uh, various formative assessment questions that I might want the students to answer from my lesson. And it also helps me monitor engagement as well. Um, so that's uh, one way. And I'll, I'll just, in my Google Classroom, I'll share both at the same time. So I'll share in Google Classroom, I'll create a new assignment. I'll put my YouTube video on there. Um, and then I will put my Google form on there as well. So the students just have basically one assignment with all the tools right there at a glance. Uh, but I did have a student send me a video of him listening to my leadership lesson while playing NBA 2K. So while he wasn't using Zoom, he was using Zoo YouTube on his uh, on his video game system. So it was hilarious because he had his video game there and then he he showed the the uh, the video of my lesson going on. So I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be impressed by that or tell him to stay focused on one thing and stop multitasking. But um, yeah, it's a good question though. Um, and speaking of, uh, I've been reading recently uh, about uh, trying to get a vir virtual presence, right? Um, so Zoom is obviously one way where everyone's got webcams and recording video and that sort of thing. Um, but kids already have lots of uh, entertainment consoles, Xboxes, Sony Playstations, that sort of thing. So uh, there seems to be this large push um, for utilizing that platform. Um, Minecraft is another great way to do that. Uh, World of Warcraft is another one. Um, those systems are already in place so that you can, I guess, if you wanted to have a virtual representation of your physical manifestation of a self, um, you can go on those platforms um, for those that have access to that. Um, but I think that really kind of speaks towards the equity lens of, um, and it really gets kind of blurry in, in terms of how do you promote a uh, Minecraft server uh, for a bunch of random kids um, and say that it is for education um, and that your teacher's telling you to do so. Um, let's see, a quick question that came in. Uh, how do you upload a video to YouTube? Um, I want to do that real quick. Yeah, um, I wanted to address a quick question. Um, from uh, a individual out there had asked, um, uh, let's see, let me go back here. Um, Jensen, they had asked, uh, what, how do you filter out YouTube ads? What was that again that you did? You put oh, it there, There's Google actually Play? multiple services. If you just go on Google uh, and just type in, you know, filter out ads through uh, YouTube. But the one that I was saying, uh, I thought it was peerview.com, but it's actually viewpeer.com. Um, okay. I threw it in the chat. Okay. Um, but when I was looking for it yeah. and did the, the quick Google search, uh, there seems to be a, at least four or five different links um, yeah. for random things that strip out ads. They have asked for a YouTube um, upload, how to do it. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yep. All right. So go to youtube.com. Um, and then right up here, this tiny little video camera with a plus sign in it, you just click that and all you do is click upload video and it's going to then go to and ask, where is your video? And this is where if you've been recording Zoom files, uh, Zoom videos, you'll notice in, in your documents, you'll have a Zoom uh, folder there with the Zoom video that you want to upload. So you just select it, right? Um, and then you'd click open. And then while you're opening, which I will, I, I just won't publish this one. It's now going to say, all right, hopefully that doesn't drag down my streaming, by the way, now that it's uploading. Let me know if it is and I'll cancel it. Um, this is where you label it. It's uh, a little pixelated, but is not it? Bad. You want me to, you, you, can, you can still read it, okay? Yeah, uh, and well, I can still hear you. So. Yeah, all you do is um, you would just uh, um, name this, right? So uh, character can't be quarantined that's uh episode three um that's the name of my leadership uh uh my colleague brandon wenzel and i we <laughs> so we call our our new show that we teach once a week character can't be quarantined uh servant leadership there one one so uh type a quick description what you want uh you know tell your viewers about your video um blah 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 and then um, you can upload a thumbnail if you have an image that you've already built uh, for this. You can upload that and it'll be like a title slide for you, a title for your video. Um, audience, this, uh, when, they, when they use the word kids, they're talking about 13 or younger. So if your video is um, targeted toward kids that are 13 and younger, there's, there's different restrictions that apply to it. Um, I say no, it's not made for kids. 
um, because it's I want it open to the whole YouTube world there. Um, and then under more options here, when you click on more options, this is where you can add tags. So it might be, you know, you might type in servant leadership, you might type in character strong, you, you know, whatever it is that you wanna, uh, when people do a search on YouTube for your video, uh, it might be IB history or theory of knowledge. It just depends on what your content area is. It's gonna help people find your videos faster when you add those tags. Um, Subtitles, uh, I I don't know, I haven't seen what this does. I've always, I just have it auto default to English um, and it's never aired on television. Uh, I'm not that famous yet. Uh, recording date, optional. Um, license, I always do standard. And then I do turn off comments. Um, I really don't want my videos becoming um, internet comments. Uh, I just don't wanna have to manage that. So I disable comments there. And then um, when you're done there, you just hit next and it's gonna ask you um, questions that I, I've never really, I haven't done any of these end screen or add cards or anything like that. And then the last, when you hit next, it'll ask, what do you want to do with this? Um, you can have it public where the whole world can see it. You can have it unlisted where only the people that have the exact YouTube link uh, can see it and that would be you know in Google Classroom you would share this link right over here um, in your Google Classroom and only the people with the link will be able to see it it won't be searchable in YouTube uh, and then private is only you the account holder can see the video uh, even if people have the link they can't see it um, and then you're done you're all set at that point so uh, so there's a, a lot of questions um, kind of spawning to the idea of YouTube um, YouTube is actually free so uh, you can go onto YouTube, you can create, well, if you already have your, or if you're logged into your Google account um, and assuming that it's, uh, if it's a personal one, you can just go ahead and create a new one uh, or new YouTube channel or new YouTube account. Um, if it's owned by your school district, um, there might be some limitations. Uh, there might be some uh, administrative settings that disable you from creating an uh, account with your work email. Um, but yeah, essentially it's just a, a big platform. You throw whatever videos you want in there. Uh, if you want, like Brian was kind of showing, um, you can publicize them, you can make a channel, you can try and make money off the videos. Um, but think of YouTube really as just a, a hosting service for videos. Uh, it doesn't really matter to what they are as long as they don't have copyrighted content. Um, as, Essentially, as soon as you upload the video, it YouTube strips the video and splits it all up and checks to see if there's any other versions of those videos elsewhere uh, for copyright infringement. And then we'll also take all the audio. Um, so make sure if you do make, uh, a, I guess, a video for your classroom or whatever, try not to play any kind of music on there because um, you'll instantly get a copyright infraction um, or strike against your account. Um, and again, a lot of the popular YouTubers out there, whatever, um, demonizing YouTube because of the whole monetization aspect of it. And there are those that definitely make a living off of YouTube, but um, for your guys' needs, uh, your best recommendation is just use it as like a file hosting video service, uh, upload all your videos to it, make them unlisted, um, maybe make a Google spreadsheet or some kind of spreadsheet of uh, all the videos that you're kind of putting up there, uh, keep all the, the record or the URLs, um, and then just use it as a repository for hosting out to your students. Um, and uh, another tip, pretty much everything, if you have a Google account tied to your Android or your iPhone or whatever, all of that, all of the video processing stuff is all done through YouTube as well. So every time you throw up a video that you make on your cell phone, uh, it's the same rendering services that, uh, that YouTube utilizes. Um, it's just unlisted or it's, uh, think of every video that you've ever made is unlisted. So, um, yeah. Uh, if we books on YouTube, will that be impact copyright? Um, I don't believe so. No, I think because it's a, it's the algorithms just check for, um, existing databases of music. Um, uh, I think I highly doubt that there would be any copyright infringement. Um, and I think because especially all of this is stuff done for education, um, you can, pretty much read all the books that you'd like. It's a really good question though. It's a good question. It's that balance between does the author want the exposure of the book or, yes. or you know, that's a great question. Wow. Uh, so, 
Um, I had a question that came up, um, you know, question was, I thought that if you couldn't immediately be available to do a temperature check, um, a student who is telling you that they are seriously at risk, should we not do one? So I'm going to go real quick on a screen share. I'm going to show you one thing that you're going to want to do using a Google form. So this was the check-in that I did. Uh, I, I, this was recently, well, actually, what, I don't know, a week and, week and a half ago or so. Um, there's a button right up here. Uh, when you go to responses and you would just uncheck that uh, where it says accepting responses, you want to make it not accepting responses when you're done reading the check-in responses. So yeah, you don't want to do a temperature check if you can't read what the students are writing. Um, and so you want to make sure you turn off the actual Google form itself when you're done with it. And that will prevent you from missing anything that um, students might have written to you. Um, you can see here um, just a, kind of an idea of the engagement that I was getting. Uh, here's the bar chart of where my kids checked in. Uh, 12 kids at a one or a two, 18 at a three. Kids are really struggling right now with this um, with this new way of, of life for right now. And so, um, yeah, that not accepting responses is what you wanna, you wanna select when you're done. That way you don't miss any of those potentially um, difficult posts where you need to get a kid some help. And then our counselors are available uh, if, if, if there's any emergency, then, you know, the, the counselors are, uh, accessible and, and, you know, you, you definitely want to make sure you, you probably talk to your building leadership as well. Um, if, if there's something that you're concerned about. Well, uh, I think we're towards the tail end of the hour here. Um, for any of those that want, uh, extra tech tips or any of that sort of thing, feel free to email me. Um, we'll also host this on the characterstrong.com webpage. Um, so if you click on uh, webinars and if you scroll down, you can actually click on past webinars um, and this will be a category in there. Um, I don't know if Brian wants to blast out his personal info or anything, but. Uh, yeah, I pretty much got off of all social media uh, in September, which was been an absolute um, just a blessing. I, I have had incredible peace in my life. <laughs> Um, but uh, you can email me, certainly. Um, I teach in the Sumner School District. My school email is Brian, that's B-R-Y-A-N underscore Slater, that's S-L-A-T-E-R at SumnerSD.org. Um, there is one last question here that I see that I, I want to address. The question is, any ideas that I'm implementing with my leadership class? Uh, I am reaching out to various individuals in our community who are all at home, which is pretty much everyone right now, and asking if they'd like to be guest, a guest on Zoom conferences with me. Um, and so I do have a, um, a coach for a, a local professional uh, football organization that's going to be meeting on a Zoom call with me, talking about servant leadership. Uh, and so that should be pretty cool. Um, I, I, I'm hoping to get a gentleman by the name of John Norlin in, in Houston Craft uh, on a Zoom conference with me. Um, I heard that they're uh, uh, pretty much the um, the the current uh, modern day geniuses when it comes to uh, servant leadership. So I'm really hoping to get them on to a, a Zoom call with me. But um, those are some things we're doing. We're, we're still doing our character logs, uh, have kids. Uh, doing character dares once a week. Um, and uh, and so that's, yeah. And we're still doing advisory as a school. We have the Character Strong Advisory Curriculum and we have teachers that are teaching Character Strong Advisory lessons on Wednesdays and they're getting creative. Uh, we're sharing our resources. If somebody makes a really good video, then uh, we're sharing it as a staff and, and other teachers who might not be comfortable could just use that same one. So, um, so that's uh, how I would close with that. Uh, Oh, uh, actually, I'm going to plug a couple things here. Yeah. Um, so uh, on Fridays for the next eight weeks, we're doing uh, virtual assemblies for those uh, kiddos to kind of uh, recreate um, some sort of culture uh, in a virtual sort of environment. Um, we'll have it on our YouTube channel. Um, we also have it in our free uh, virtual resources for educators um, on our site. Um, and let's see if you want to go to characterstrong.com uh, backslash free resources. Uh, I put it in the chat log, but um, it's all one word, no underscore, um, all lowercase as well. Uh, you can sign up there. Uh, it's just 
your first name, last name, and an email address, and we'll send out information for you to get uh, kindness challenges, uh, virtual assemblies. We've got the virtual resources for educators. Um, we're also doing a virtual summit uh, in April or starting April 13th through the 24th. Uh, we've got a lot of educators yeah. um, that were doing uh, just amazing amount of information, um, yeah. amount of wealth. Um, obviously, it has nothing really to do with tech. And, well, in some way it does. But um, again, just all the stuff for uh, Character Strong. Um, again, if you guys have uh, any questions, feel free to email me um, or send them all to Brian and Brian yeah, can right. take care of all of them. <laughs> um, but uh, I yeah. think that's pretty much it. I don't know if anyone has any last questions or anything. I think we've addressed most of the tech issues. Basically, uh, we're, we're just in uncharted territories, yeah. right? Like. Uh, Brian was probably the best teacher that I knew of uh, in the Sumner School District who had kind of flipped the model of um, students in the classroom uh, and the teacher leading them. Uh, and instead, he kind of flipped it on the head and mm -hmm. had the, the students leading it. Um, and Brian was really just there to moderate and, and kind of give advice and guidance along the way. Um, so luckily, Brian's been doing this for a couple of years now. But mm -hmm. Um, a lot of teachers, this is just new uncharted territories. This is just, uh, it's, you know, a, a weird place to be. Um, and I think just proceeding forward um, as an educator, as a teacher, um, just knowing that there's going to be bumps in the road that you're probably going to fall into some sort of pitfalls. Um, but everyone has grace right now. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a a kindness campaign going on uh, through all the social media channels. And it's just been amazing to see uh, how empathetic uh, humanity has gotten uh, over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, everyone just wants to help each other out. Um, staring into a camera is obviously very hard, very difficult. You don't have that, uh, that traction that you don't get kind of instant feedback. You're just, you're there. Um, but just, uh, just, do your best uh try to use the the tools at your disposal um pretty much everything is in google is free um in fact i don't think there's anything that isn't free on google um so you're essentially giving them all your data um but uh just yeah just utilize the stuff that you have um try to just make the best that you've got and uh we'll be there with every step along the way to help you out yeah. Yeah. Last question on there. Somebody asked if they can share the assemblies link on their Google Classroom. Uh, yeah, you would just share the Character Strong channel there. And um, and what's great is that they're going to get going in a rhythm here. So um, your kids, you just tell them when and where and uh, they'll start going there themselves. Uh, and their last one was pretty amazing. We had some students watch it. Uh, from their homes. We had it blasting on our TV here at home and um, it was pretty cool concept. I think our school is going to do something similar now. We're not going to do it live, but we're probably going to pre-record. Uh, we're going to ask our students to to send us videos of them doing whatever they're talented at. And then we'll put together a montage. We're going to call it, you know, Spartans, uh, probably not Spartans Got Talent because we already do that at our school anyway, but something similar to that where we recognize the talent of our student body. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, what how I think we're going to take that idea and run with it. But uh, well, I think well, we're good, Jensen. Yeah, that concludes the uh, the hour. Um, again, uh, Mike at characterstrong.com. I'm more than happy to answer any of your tech questions uh, that they come in. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll see you guys later. All right, guys, take care. <laughs>